And thank you all for being here tonight, those who have returned and those who are joining us for the first time. Um, as Michelle mentioned, my name is Nerea Leva Gutierrez and I am Acting Executive Director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. And we at NOMA are so pleased tonight to host our virtual curators walk. Um, by now, I think you all have seen the wonderful and soulful exhibition, Healing in Community, Physical to Virtue, which has been curated by Patricia Miranda. And if you were here for our opening, you got to hear from many of the artists who talked about their works, their vision and their process. Um, and tonight we will turn the focus on the exhibition's curator who will sort of demystify her role um, and share how she decided on these particular galleries, how um, she brought these works together um, and how she thought about how uh, the public might experience the exhibition um, and the themes that developed out of this virtual installation. Um, before I introduce our curator, I wanted to mention that our program tonight is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. Um, as always, we are incredibly grateful for their continued support, without which we could not offer these programs, which more than ever feel critical and frankly, life-giving. Um, and so now I'd like to uh, introduce our curator, Patricia Miranda. Uh, a longtime resident of Washington Heights, Patricia is an interdisciplinary artist, curator, and educator, and founder of Map Space Project Space and the Crit Lab, both forums that bring together artists in dialogue, curatorial and exhibition exploration, critique, and collaboration. As an artist, Patricia creates objects and installations using found vintage textiles, especially lace that reference her Italian and Irish heritage, books and paper carefully and meticulously altered with handmade natural dyes and pigments as form, practice, and eco-feminist action. Her work is an extended essay in process and the intermingling of material and environment. She is concerned fundamentally, as she has noted in, quote, distinct genetics and environmental and cultural history of each material. In addition to exhib exhibiting her own work widely, she has held visiting artist posts at Vermont Studio Center, the Heckscher Museum, and the University of Utah. Visiting lecturer positions include Purchase College SUNY, Kutztown University, WCC Peak Skills Center for Digital Arts, and has been the recipient of numerous residencies and grants, including the Arts Westchester New York State Council on the Arts and an NEA grant for her work with homeless young people. She has served as a faculty member at several universities, including New Hampshire's Institute of Arts MFA program and in the Curatorial Studies graduate program at Western Colorado University. She was curator and director of the gallery at Concordia College and has developed education programs for K through 12 schools, museums, and institutions, including the Guggenheim, American Museum of Natural History, and the Smithsonian. We are so fortunate that Patricia has shared her vast experience with all of us through this exhibition and tonight um, in her curator's walk. And on a personal note, I should also say that it's been a wonderful experience getting to know Patricia through our extended planning meetings and discussions on Zoom with the whole NOMA team um, as a person, as an artist, as a collaborator and curator. Patricia, thank you. The floor is yours. Oh my, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Nidia. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Nidia. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Noma, for inviting me to, to work on this exhibition. Um, as a long time Uptown resident, the first time I've been curating up here. So it's a real, I feel especially honored and privileged to have been asked and to do this and to work with those incredibly powerful women at Noma. It has been in incredible. And um, working on an exhibition like this, you know, which is Noma's first online exhibition, uh, presented lots of opportunities and lots of challenges, <laughs> which I think we're all, um, you know, we're all facing in today's world. So in the in the notion of wanting to create a um, an exhibition, oops, I'm just going to hit my timer so I make sure I don't go on and on. But um, you know, in thinking about an online exhibition and how it might differ from, in unique ways from an in-person exhibition where we actually see the work, uh, I wanted to create something where the, it would have a distinct feel. And I think, you know, this is 
this is, uh, I think there are people who've been working on the, um, in the digital realm for many years, but for many artists who are object-based artists, the, the digital has been a portal to the real. In other words, a way for people to be introduced to our work to hopefully see it in person. And thinking about an online exhi exhibition that only exists online is, you know, makes us think a little bit differently about it. So I think I'm, I'm sort of thinking about that a lot in my curatorial practice in, in general and in particular, and I feel like it's the beginning of this conversation and, and exciting things that can happen that can expand our reach as artists, while also the challenges of if you make work like mine that's particularly tactile, the digital, you know, um, doesn't always communicate it as well. So we have to come up with new innovative ways to do this. In terms of the exhibition, I was thinking about, you know, I didn't want to have something where you had like a mass of images and they sort of scroll, you know, like the never ending scroll. I really wanted to give it a shape and a kind of a thoughtful, I wanted to have a thoughtful shape to the way that the images were organized. And so I decided to create galleries <clears throat> to divide the show into galleries. And actually, oh, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and whoop. And I'm going to I'm going to kind of try and do something a little <laughs> technical, which is pop out to show a couple of short uh, videos. But so bear with me as um, you know as we kind of learn this new form. Um, but anyway, the the three galleries were so when Noam approached me about this, and we were it was the beginning of the pandemic, and we were thinking, okay, we want to do something that you know relates to what's going on, right? Connects to what's going on in some way. But you know, I wasn't interested in. I don't think Noma was interested either in a you know a, a Corona exhibition, right? We wanted something that had a more a more you know a far a further reach and and maybe a more poetic framework. And so I decided to so healing and community was what we came came to uh, land on. I think it you know it's it's sort of open ended and general, but speaks uh, directly in many ways to what we are experiencing. I divided the gallery the the exhibition into three galleries because I feel like artists respond to the world in in very diverse ways and I wanted to be able to reflect that by kind of concentrating certain works together to uh, to kind of reflect the theme and so the first one is community and uh, I think that let me I think that community in in the context of this particular project I was thinking of as as um, artists looking outward, art looking outward, and outward at the world, at both our local community, our regional community, our global community, our world community. And, um, and so I want to start, and, and so it has a particular cast that I think you're going to see, and you'll see sort of, you know, the galleries are not, um, I mean, I've created a visual, what I think of as a visual narrative in each gallery, but it's not a literal narrative like us, us you know, like a book, one, once upon a time, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's a little more, um, there's aesthetic connections or um, sometimes poetic connections and sometimes content connections and, and sometimes pure visual connections between the work. So you'll see things that kind of will appear and reappear, sort of uh, alliterative themes and stuff like that. So I'm going to see if I can do this while I practiced, but uh, um in terms of sharing, we can't, it's not possible to, where is it? Um, it's not possible to show this entire video, but I feel like it's such a shame to not have a chance to see any of it. This is a, a, a video by um, Joanna Powell, and I'm going to just play a little bit of it and then say a few words, and hopefully you'll be able to hear also. So um, that beautiful video, which I, you know, I feel terrible to kind of truncate it in that way, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of a taste of, of it, and I hope you will go to the website and, and look at it. I feel it's a wonderful kind of kickoff to the community gallery, and uh, you'll see that windows are kind of a theme that comes up again and again. And I, you know, I, I was thinking of the window. She's in a window, she's looking out a window, and the video is being filmed through another window. There's all these layers of windows. And I think windows have taken on a, a kind of a more, I don't know, a more poignant 
uh, cast for us now here in, in the middle of a, of a pandemic. And also the rectangle in Western art. The rectangle in Western art is a space within which anything can happen, right? Inside the rectangle, anything can happen. So a rectangle is a window, it's a door, it's a portal, it's a stage. There are all these ways that a, that a, that a, that a rectangle becomes a frame. And I think that this particular work frames is multi layers of frames of the her looking out at us, us looking in at her, looking through windows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I feel like it was a wonderful way to start off this idea of looking and looking out. So starting at looking out, and this image, beautiful little painting of the George Washington Bridge. Um, you know, uh, I think in in many in neighborhoods you have sort of. Uh, you have things in a neighborhood that become kind of part of your internal landscape. So if you live near a really big mountain, that mountain becomes part of your internal landscape. Well, I think for a lot of us uptowners, <laughs> the George Washington Bridge uh, is kind of part of our internal landscape. And it's one of the things that we see um, very regularly. And again, um, windows, looking out our windows, I think is also unique to an urban environment. When we are looking at windows, uh, we, are, we look out our window, we see other windows. and the other thing about the windows is that they have, you know, there's an added quality um, during a pandemic, which is that we know that there are people behind those windows. And so we're thinking very, we are thinking very consciously about those windows in a, in a, in a different way. And so windows uh, come up again and again. And so here we have an artist reflected in the window, which I think really references beautifully back to the dance, to the, um, the dance video that we just saw a tiny clip of. And so this artist is looking out, taking a picture of looking out to the world while reflecting back an image of themselves. Uh, this, I love this connection, like this interesting connection from this to this. This is one of those sort of aesthetic or poetic connections where this is also a rectangle. <laughs> the gate is a rectangle, right? It's a door. It's also something that opens. It's filled with a grid that kind of divides the space up. And the yellow is, is like another rectangle and it's also broken up in the way that a window is. It's almost like a body in a window. Um, so I felt like that was a wonderful movement right into this one, which is the stripes of the street, the, the, um, you know, the marks on the street reflecting those ones that we just saw in the previous videos. And this sole person uh, with a mask riding through the city, an, an essential worker delivering food probably to somebody um, and uh, this, so this community gallery shows people and people, th but people we are not sort of connecting with in a physical way, right? People that we are seeing from a distance, people that we know are there that we can't always, um, we, we are not um, connected to, we may or may not know them. And so images of what we see around our city and the people that make our community amazing, right? The, the people that bring their passion, their culture, their, their sort of fire and they embody and, and uh, are, our world with their culture and their identity and the, the walls are covered with it. And it's a wonderful uh, reflection, I think, of our particular community of Uptown Manhattan. And so this is, uh, you know, these next few images are reflecting really uh, about the virus. And in, in, I put these in the community gallery because I'm thinking of the virus, you know, usually illness is something that affects us intimately. It's a private affair. Um, we, we tend to experience, you know, the illness we have ourselves or with family members as something that happens inside the family or very much inside our small community. And yet in today's world, we are experiencing a virus that is universal. It's affecting everyone. It doesn't affect everyone in exactly the same way. And sometimes for, for reasons that are really not okay, um, that I don't have time to go into tonight, but, um, but we are all kind of together thinking about this illness at the same time. I think that is a fairly unique experience, um, you know, that it, at least since the plague, all right? In the plague, they were probably all thinking about the plague, but we haven't had this kind of com uh, communal um, illness that we're all thinking about at the same time. And so I wanted to connect some aspects of that, it's not letting me advance, uh, of that, um, thinking about the virus in, in the more communal or global way. And then we think about our own history in this image by Julia Giusto, our, our heritage and how that grounds us in our place and also connects us to the global community and what that means for us. And again, you see a window there and another window. <laughs> um, I think this is an experience that maybe, maybe again, only 
very few times in history can we say that we all have experienced the same thing at the same time. We live in such a diverse world that that's fairly unusual. And yet this idea of looking through the window um, at the world, knowing that there are other people doing the same thing at the same time, I think is pretty much a marker of this moment. Um, and that idea of being alone together, alone and together at the same time, I think was one of the things that struck me about these images. And again, these themes really grew out of um, the images that I saw. I knew that I wanted to do this overarching thing about healing, but the way that the organ, the, the images organized themselves was, a, you know, was by the images, right? <laughs> by the way that they connected. And this image I thought really made me think of, you know, the 7 p.m. opening your windows and cheering and clapping and clanging pots and pans that we just did a few minutes ago here and has been really, really vibrant every single night uh, uptown. And I think really, I hope that we'll grow into, you know, a real movement to offer more protection to essential workers and people who are on the front lines that whose work was perhaps not always as recognized or compensated the way that it should and that we are, I think, realizing now. And uh, so another common common thing that we are experiencing is, is a new relationship to masks and what that means for us and how we look out in the world and think about this, both as this element of protection for ourselves and for others, um, and as well as, you know, we have a complicated relationship with it. I, you know, I can't see someone smile when they're wearing a mask. Um, and again, look, there's windows in that one. <laughs> And artists are, of course, always thinking about the the um, you know the the things that are happening in their local community and and how they are connected to the greater world. And so we have some work here that is uh, has uh, reflections of things that are happening globally, events and activities that are happening globally. And we when we think of ourselves as a global community. Um, and artists are often kind of taking those those ideas and expressing them through the language of art, the, the things that we care about, the, the ideals we, we hold or that we share and, and the complicated relationships we have with them and the, the ways that they both you know, support and sometimes fail us. And I think this, this piece really speaks to that. Um, and then these three works by Olivia Beans, and I hope you guys are all seeing the artist names because I realize I haven't been saying every single one. Um, I feel like they're really, uh, I don't know, reflect a kind of a passionate, tumultuous relationship with what's going on. We have the departed thinking about people we have lost, people we know, people we don't know, because we are, again, experiencing some of these things as an entire community. And I think that has a powerful, uh, that's a powerful aspect of this particular moment in time. And then looking at this, the kind of tumbling, turning forms in this, I saw, I, I don't know, this one seemed to really follow that quite naturally. I began to think of this as a kind of a body uh, or an organ of some kind, you know, an internal organ or some kind of being. And uh, I just thought the way it was sort of turning and tumbling led wonderfully from that image to this image and the idea of the heart. And there's a window in that heart too. <laughs> there was a lot of windows in all of these images and the heart being, you know, the window uh, to the body and to the soul. And also the way that this kind of turns and tumbles in a similar way to this, as though this was a kind of a heart, a kind of an organ. And um, wonderfully, it led to this one, which also had that same <laughs> feeling of a tumbling, turning form, a kind of an organ, like a strange organ, you know, from the detritus of a home, right? A carpet, which is something we live on, we walk on, we, we, we lie on perhaps watching television or, and something that is then, um, discarded and, and yet has this life, we, you know, brought a new life by this artist in the way that it's kind of wrapped and turned and tumbled into another really kind of a heart. It's always looked to me like a heart. And that also brought me to these, and I think you can see the sort of connection between the sort of folds and turning and color to these uh, couple of works by Aliana Perez, who very small, delicate works and intimate again about the illness, but also reflecting the community because of the reference to the hospital, the hospital, um, the hospital curtains and stuff like that made me think of, this is us thinking about the virus and the virus in relationship to how uh, we connect with our neighbors. Are we infectious? Are we infecting others? Um, how might they infect us? It changes our, our way, the way that we, <clears throat> excuse me, relate to one another in some important ways. And that led me to these the notion of healing and healing botanicals in these lovely, you know, again, tiny little works that I think 
um, carry a lot of weight of the ideas about healing and plants and nature and um, led me to these uh, foraged uptown, uptown Manhattan foraged plants uh, on these uh, newspaper articles and things reflecting both the local and the global and the way that artists kind of can bring sort of large global ideas down to something very personal. Um, and again, our community, this is, these are uh, wonderful paintings of the botanical gardens. And uh, again, the community that we look out to, the community that, that, uh, that is part of our, our local environment, the one that we look out to when we um, want to connect with our community and the places that are there for us and, and around us. And this gallery, I wanted to end on this, and you'll see that um, circles begin to come in and be really important. And I love this uh, statement about black love and, I, and healing. I think this is a really powerful way to end our community gallery and to lead us also into the next gallery, which is our Connection Gallery. The Connection Gallery is also a community gallery in many ways, but the Connection Gallery is really about people. And I'm going to try again to um, just show a very brief, oh, I hope I blinked out of that. I didn't. Oh, great, I did. Okay, so I'm going to just, again, just a, a brief, and I, I hope this is just enough to entice you to go and watch these entire videos. This is a, a, a song, original song by Tatiana Kalko. So hard to so hard to stop that <laughs> so hard to stop that but we will come back um, and you'll have, just have to go to the website and listen to the whole song really beautiful so this kicks off our connection uh, gallery which is the one that's really about people and people that we are connecting with not people that are distant or far from us and so I thought this was this gallery is filled with joy and delight I think um, and this was an incredibly joyful image. I feel like I, everyone should wear this on a t-shirt or a button or something um, and really is, uh, and I thought also of this because I found walking the streets with a mask, I couldn't see people smile and they couldn't see me smile. And I, I found that to be something that was a bit challenging for me. And so I feel like this is a wonderful image. And then Carmen uh, Polino's uh, yarn bombings that uh, she has been putting all around her community, uh, I think, is you know just an incredibly delightful way for uh, to make connections for these images to connect with other people in a real way to feel the hand that made them to uh, feel the sentiment and and to feel the connection. Um, these are things that are tactile and that you can touch and that the care and love of the maker is really apparent in it and also that they're put in a public space to honor and acknowledge the people. I think is really powerful. Another just sheer joyful image of, you know, the, the beauty and wonder of the city and what we can do when we are not under a uh, pandemic and we are fishing and we are running and we are, we are playing and we are boating and we are doing all sorts of things. So I thought this was a particularly delightful image. 
Um, this image, another one uh, of the yarn bombing, I think really kind of speaks for itself. I don't think you need to say too much of it. That child's face and that in that rainbow is just, uh, you know, one of the most delightful things and leads wonderfully to this image. Um, a crowded playground of children playing in, in incredibly joyful ways, bright colored clothing, just children from all over the all over the world, every culture, uh, just an incredible depiction of New York. And of course, this image has, you know, again, uh, more poignancy because this is before the pandemic when when we weren't we wouldn't be worrying so much about children playing so close and running together and hugging and running and and all of that. And, and we don't know when you know, when, when this will be uh, possible again. Uh, so this, this uh, image is both wonderful and joyful and also has, you know, uh, the undertones of what's happening now. Um, Sudin's, uh, I feel like this was a wonderful lead in to these, these characters. Um, this wonderful, she calls them neighbors. And I feel like that's what they are. They're wonderful neighbors in all of the array of um, beauty and diversity that we, that we have, I think, all over the world and particularly uptown. And I think that's something we should celebrate. Let's celebrate the diversity, which actually is one of the most amazing things about being a human being, um, in my view. So that those were wonderful neighbors um, and led wonderfully into uh, Linda Bonilla's uh, also, I think, extravagantly joyful piece uh, the hand raised, respect your body, oh, the legs. I, for me, this is a very musical piece. I feel like it was, I feel like she's dancing. And the hand also felt um, a little potent and led me to this um, by the same artist who did the small drawings in the community gallery, Eliana Perez. And the hand again now being just as beautiful, but also something that we have concerns about. Can we, can we shake hands? Can we reach our hand out? Something that was just such an act of human connection and kindness and all of that um, is now is fraught. Is, it, it just is a little bit different. Um, and you know, this maybe maybe you think this should be in the community gallery, but to me, <laughs> the little red lighthouse is like a character. It's more like a, a personality in our neighborhood than it is like a piece of architecture. And uh, and also it's a lighthouse, and I think the artist really thought this that symbols light to light the world and a symbol of hope. And so I think that that red lighthouse is another one of those characters in our neighborhood that that is really um, I don't know part of our part of our community, part of our community. And Wilhelmina Grant Cooper has these wonderful uh, array of, I call them angels. I don't know if she does, but um, they're, I thought they were like beings watching over us. And um, Wilhelmina had one of the first studio visits, the virtual studio visits for Noma, and it was wonderful. I highly recommend that you go back and watch it. And I just want these angels to be uh, watching over me. I don't know about you, but watching over us. Um, all the time, so they were delightful. And um, and again, Carmen, uh, these yarn bombings, these, <laughs> I feel like we want our community to be filled with um, all kinds of people, including artists that we really admire and love. And um, I think those were just wonderful. Um, and uh, Cecilia Inez Tavares, wonderful image of, uh, I think again, the, the community, like, connecting the, the human with nature, people with nature, um, making us think of ourselves as not outside of nature, and um, having the, the, this image of the hand holding the figure, holding the planet in her hands, I felt like was a really poignant expression of a community. And uh, these images of, uh, of elderly folks in New York City, I feel like really it's always wonderful to see images of people who are often are marginalized um, or not seen and the these are our elders people who can teach us so much who have seen so much um, and can teach us a lot about what's going on today and i thought this image showing how objects in our in our life can also be expressive portraits of of who we are and the final few images wonderful um apatrida uh uh, dolls, which are sorrow dolls. These wonderful gifts, I think, uh, I feel like are just, you know, they express what I think artists can do in a way that almost, you know, that art can do in a way that almost nothing else can, which can really embody and depict a, a wide array of very complex emotions. So these are both, you know, whimsical and even a bit funny um, and really 
poignant and poetic. I feel like I'm using the word poignant a lot, but these works are so much that. And, and also have, you know, they have a little bit of that complicated sadness that we feel. And so I think these are just delightful um, and a wonderful way to kind of move towards the end of our community gallery. Um, I could just watch those all day. And the final image in our community gallery was this beautiful photograph of these two <coughs> origami hope characters. And I, it's a beautiful image. Um, you know, they're made of maps and reflecting the world. And also the composition is beautiful. I thought it was wonderful the way that the, the sort of nose of one almost touched the wing of another and the nose of the other almost touched the wing of the... And so these two birds are together and yet not touching. I thought that was a wonderful, um, a wonderful poetic ending to our community gallery. The final gallery um, is our reflection gallery. And, you know, I, I it was really important to divide these up because I feel like there's all these different kinds of expression that artists do. And obviously some of these works could be in multiple galleries. It's not a, there's not a hard line between them, but I felt like I wanted to organize them in groups that spoke to one another. So the, the reflection gallery is what I would call a, a gallery of introspection, gallery of meditation. Um, the works have a, a tend to be more abstract and so we come to them and bring, um, I mean, you always bring yourself to any artwork that you encounter, but the abstract images kind of allow you to stop and build your own imaginative story. And so each of them has that quality, these floating plants, this kind of, you know, strange organic thing that's growing beautifully and strangely, this, these haunting, um, these haunting floating plants just make me go quiet. They just make me go quiet. So this gallery, I feel like is much more quiet. <laughs> and so it's a space of, let me advance it, um, a space of more meditation and reflection. And so these images, I feel like are, you know, the artist probably has ideas of things that are in there and maybe we will see them and maybe we won't, um, but we can come to them and spend time and have our own experience um, that might go in a completely different direction. And I feel like this one, I felt like I was in a dark room and if I stayed long enough, I might see things that were there that I didn't see initially. And those things would be mine, but set in motion by the artistry that this artist um, did. And so I feel like we, we need all of these different kinds of art. We need art that motivates and empowers and art that invigorates and, you know, uh, activates and then we also need time to reflect, to reconnect, to recharge, to heal. Um, the, this group of images, um, I really felt like I was lying in the grass looking up at the dappled um, light through the trees. I think some, that's something that we as children did and I don't think that that's one experience that maybe maybe is one of the few experiences that doesn't change at all as an adult when you lie in the grass and you look up through the trees. Um, this dappled light was just um, so peaceful and quiet. Um, I could hear wind in that. And so this gallery seems to have a lot of references to nature. And so there's a group of, and, and circles, the circles start to show up. And so there's a group of wonderful circular Tondo images by Louise Pagan. And I started to think of them as the earth, looking at the earth from the sky, our, our small blue ball, moving through space, all on its own, the only planet we have, filled with the only people we have, which is us and one another. Um, and that kind of uh, way that looking back at that ball makes us think about the world a little bit differently. Uh, and in this work, the circles again are moving through space and making this beautiful, peaceful blue, um, feeling like a, this is like musical also, but it's a quiet, it's a quiet music, it's a quiet music as is this one. So we moved from one, that one of Ellen Hackle Fagan's into this one where we, it's almost like we went into this atmospheric space of peace. For me, that's how I experienced this work. Um, a quiet uh, sound and a peaceful place, like a meditative, a place to meditate. And again, nature seems to be a, a, a real, a real kind of thing that organized itself in this gallery. Um, I feel like artists are depicting nature in ways that are not illustrating nature, but more like the feeling of, 
uh, the experience of nature through their own eyes. One of the things that art does is it allows us the opportunity to see the world through another person's eyes. Art is an act of empathy and the experience of art is an act of empathy. And so when I look at these works, I'm suddenly seeing the world in a way that I didn't see before. And so now my vision is enriched and enlarged. And I love the, connect, the way that this moves from the, the orange and yellow lines from this sunlit piece to the orange and yellow lines and red lines in this piece. Um, and moving from this piece, which again, it's, it's a space, it's a feeling space. It's about, it's kind of how nature feels rather than how nature looks and how this one moves into this one. So you have the sort of movements of those green, green shapes moving across into this one. Um, I think is a wonderful, a wonderful connection. Um, and so I think that, I always wanna talk less in this gallery because it's a quiet one. Um, this gallery is sort of nature uh, being present for us and being there and something that we, we sort of look to for, for solace and we look to for rejuvenation. Um, that is also this incredibly active place that goes on without us. Uh, teeming with life. I feel like this is just teeming with life. All of this life that is happening under our eyes that we are not always aware of and we don't always take care of. Um, back to our, our small planet. And I feel like artists are, are, art is one of the ways that we might be able to reflect back on some of these um, ideas of, about nature and community and um, maybe help build, can help us build a better world. And maybe I'm optimistic, but what else can we be, right? And so these wonderful um, meditative images of and circles of the world and our um, galleries with these wonderful two pieces that are paintings on um, CDs that were by a 12 year old who made these paintings to give away to people to help make them happy during this time of uh, a pandemic. And so that is um, my, Really, I mean, I could say so much more about these artists, these amazing artists and this amazing work, but uh, I did want to leave a bit of time for a few more of the artists because as an artist curator, I'm, I'm, I love artists and I want as much as possible to give them time to, for their voice to be heard. Um, and so we're going to just hear from a few artists this time. And hopefully, I hope you have questions for the artists, for me, um, that you can share. Uh, when we're finished, we'll have some time for that. And I'm going to start this. Michelle will unmute the artist and they will, I want the artist to please introduce yourself and say something about your, your work. And I'm so delighted to have you um, speaking tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for listening. <laughs> so Gregory. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> as they say. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, Patricia, and everyone at NOMA for all that you do. It's been great being part of the Art Stroll for many years, open studios, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, this one in particular, I actually wrote a few lines um, referring to the paintings. You could call it cheating a little bit, but I'll make it from the heart as much as possible and expound on what I wrote. Uh, so I called this dwellings from my dwelling. I avoided the word. I thought about shelterings from my shelter, but sometimes we think of the word shelter and we think of a homeless shelter. We're all very lucky to, to be sheltering in our homes if we have one. So I avoided that title. Um, but for years, I gazed out the window looking east at the buildings catching the late afternoon light, particularly inspired to feature that red and white one. But usually forewent in the inspiration particular uh, for other projects rather. Despite the circumstances, this extra pandemic time afforded me the seas of opportunity in every session while painting, putting down the brushes to join the pause and applause that rang out from those very buildings at 7 p.m. for the medical and frontline workers. Um, and there are actually some of the days uh, at 7 p.m there were people on the rooftops to the building just to the left of the one that's centered in the painting um, that were clapping and applauding and cheering. Uh, so it was, 
it was nice to be part of that experience while painting. Um, and just purely from a technical standpoint or from what inspires me to paint, uh, light making form, especially late in the day, I, I do a lot of plein air cityscapes and landscapes. Um, so that, that golden hour where uh, the sunlight is cast on the trees and buildings, et cetera, um, is really just from a pure aesthetic standpoint, what inspires me to paint. Um, uh, so I guess that's about it. I'll leave it there that's allow wonderful. for another time. That's wonderful. There's very Hopper-esque quality to this um, painting. That's, that's really wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Cecilia. Hello. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you for having me. I am Cecilia Ines Tavares. I was uh, born and raised here in Washington Heights, currently living in Inwood. So I've been fortunate to have, you've mentioned nature, nature. Um, being in an urban, you know, city environment, it's it's always been something um, healing for me and a refuge, um, and more so now that we, yeah, that we're going through this, you know, this global um, crisis or challenge, um, and art also has been something that's been healing for me. So it's about the the series that I've included in this exhibition is about um, it is about self reflection, you know, the process of making art and and taking the time to kind of look within and, and then getting inspired by um, the things around you. So being able to, while walking the dog and being able to kind of connect to nature. Now that we're in spring, I think it's been um, a thing that has inspired these pieces too with this, this blossoming or blooming that are coming out of this, like seeing the silver lining and seeing the, the good things that are coming out of this and helping us kind of, there's been a lot of talk about um, reevaluating what's essential, you know, and I think that that is something that we, you know, essential is to kind of be able to slow down and reconnect with ourselves. And, um, and even though we're practicing social distancing, you know, finding other ways of, of uh, connecting to others, sharing our stories, whether they be on social media, online, and sharing our work and, and our experiences, um, which is also wonderful. And I, I try to also do that. Um, Try to always focus on the beauty and time, you know, that always holds a lot of hope for, for, um, for a brighter future and for change, um, which I think that will, a lot of that will come out of, of this. Um, learning to, you know, reconnect to, to nature or, or, or a more um, sustainable way of life, I think. Um, and so, yeah, making the collages have been, the whole process is very, very, it's about slowing down and, and, and it's very tactile. So, you know, cutting the pieces and kind of putting this puzzle piece together and, and, um, and somehow it revealing other things um, within myself and about the experience that I'm going through. Um, and so it's been very um, healing for me. And, uh, I think that's all I wanted to share, but um, thank that's you so wonderful. much. Well, yeah. thank, you. thank you so much. It's wonderful. I think the images are, are amazing, really. Um, thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, also, I forgot to say, but if you have questions, please type them into the chat because we'll, it's, you know, there's a lot of people, so it's hard to kind of, you know, do, do like a real Q and A the way we would if we were a person. But if you put stuff in the chat, we can, we'll, I'll, 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 I'll respond to those at the, at the end. Okay. So. And we have Yasuo Tanaka. Are you here? Michelle, do you see? I do not see her. Um, Yasuo, if you're here, please raise your hand. So we can, uh, we can, um, move to the next person and come back if Absolutely. It, yes i you, you can keep looking i know sometimes in a sea of faces it can be hard to find um i think maybe she had difficulty and i, I don't see her anymore okay all right well we, we can let me know if we'll, we'll come back if we we have and uh the other cecilia <laughs> <laughs> 
you, you try to separate the Cecilia's, but they didn't work, right? Um, thank you so much, Patricia, Patricia, for this um, lucid and sensitive introduction, really, um, and curatorial approach, uh, very generous. Um, I, I choose this series of work to, to, to submit to, to this exhibition because the, it really relates to the sense of healing and community. I mean, these are based in Quitapenas, um, sort of dolls, as you know, many of us are as, uh, Latin Americans aware of, of the concept of Quitapenas. And uh, these are small dolls which are, well, most common in Guatemala, but if they are all, all in, the, in the south of, uh, north, north of South America, I'm from Argentina, and you know, they're very common in the north and from Cordoba, where I'm from. And these are small dolls that you put, I mean, children or everyone <laughs> can put under the pillow and it takes your sorrows away. So, and during, during your dreams. So when you wake up, there's a sense of healing behind it. So I did this whole series of them in different, I am print-based uh, artist and uh, they, I work with, with uh, fabrics and then with um, uh, recycled cardboards and then with, uh, I, I turn to porcelain. And I turn to porcelain because of, um, because of the tactile sense of embossing and, and dealing with the material. So I thought it was very interesting, the concept, because they also relate with a sense of community. These are usually made by a community of women and uh, women and children. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the concept of the war going from the physical to the tactile, and I mean, sorry, to the physical to the virtual. And these were made to be touched. And in a moment that we are living in a moment in which touch seems to be connecting to the death sentence, you know, if you touch is dangerous, so touch is like we are separating, but something which is so essential as human beings. So all of these gifts like kind of will want the idea of the movement again to be uncomfortable and being kind of moving and trying to get out of that virtuality to be touch again. So that idea of that being, you know, from, from physical to virtual and willing to be touched again. And, uh, and the last thing I would like to say about this is that for me it's very, I, I work with um, in the collaborative way as well. So I, I was based in Washington Heights for 10 years but I travel a lot and I have done residencies and projects in different places. So usually I made the plate in one place and then imprinted another place and, and created this, all this community made in different places. So I, I made this, uh, I'm at the moment and it's kind of 1 a.m. here. I'm almost caught in quarantine in England. I with a fellowship here. And, um, and I made, I, I made the, the matrix here. And then I, I embossing, I printed in porcelain in the cornerstone uh, pottery uh, workshop, which is in the same building that Noma used to be, just across the street where I live. So that that idea of how how things are built, you know, and touch and and travel, uh, I thought it connect with the concept that we're we're talking you now. You know, it's just kind of trying to, and I think they're moving away because they want to scale the screen and they want to be touched again. So it's waiting for the physical. I think that's it. Wonderful. Oh, thank you for staying up <laughs> for us. Oh. <laughs> I'm really very happy to be here. <laughs> I'm very happy that we got to hear from you. I was wondering if you made the dolls. Too. I mean, I figured you probably did if you made the dolls and then and then created the the gifts for them. Really, really wonderful. And and that story just you know opened it up in a whole new way of like thinking global, acting local, and the connections that we have across the long distances now. That's fabulous. I'm so glad you were able to to join us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think we have one more um, artist to speak. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, thank you so much. It was like so well created. And you, you got it. I mean, this sculpture actually is totally about, it's totally about the body, it's totally about healing. Um, a year ago, my neck, just gave in and uh, I was living a different life. I had put art aside and um, due to my job, I got stuck in my couch and I thought that I could never ever make art again. And, um, and it slapped me on the face and it made me realize that you can't take for granted to make art and somehow, after a struggle and making little drawing, I finally was able to go into um, the, the community center where I was able to touch clay again. 
and then to make this sculpture. And this sculpture to me represents like how an artist when you can't like create anymore it's like you're all inside of yourself and until you you need to express you, you like you can and you're dying somehow if you can't express what's inside your soul and um and and now i see that with this quarantine actually you realize how important it is to be an artist and how lucky we are because we know what to do with our time <laughs> to be like uh, to somehow to be told like yes you can just stay home and just make art and just express what all of this is feeling and everything um that other people will not be able to express and somehow we are that vessel and i think this is why this is why art is healing and and why we should be so grateful that we are creator and to never ever take for granted that yeah that those things here and in this brain and in the heart and in the soul uh, allows us to create those magical things and put them here in the earth and in front of people. And so, yeah, we're really, really blessed. And uh, I'm so glad to be back at MoMA. I used to do the art studio and the art stroll, and I miss this community. So thank you so much um, for this wonderful uh, show. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was beautiful. I think I think uh, I think sometimes artists can feel, you know, in times of trial, like why should I make art? You know, what does it mean? But I, it's essential. I mean, it's it's an essential part of what makes us human, um, and it is an act of empathy, um, and it also helps people see the world in different ways, right? And and open us up. So I, I to me, anyway, it's 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 truly essential. So. Um, I think that's the last uh, artist that we had to speak tonight, and we have just a few minutes. Um, I saw. I think I saw, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, yeah, I I just wanted to um, to jump in here because I want to transition to uh, the questions uh, and answers. But I just, you know, we we had a schedule, and you know, and honestly, um, this is this has just been inspiring and i think i said at the beginning the soulful exhibition and i'm just moved to say that again um you know so i have so i have so much i would love to say um so many things have come up tonight and i think they've touched on so many of the profound feelings that we all share and one of the things i thought was so interesting was this notion of sort of this collective moment you know this communal this notion of 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 injury or or the, or the private um, of disease and and how this is not private at all, and it's interesting because I'm taken back a little bit um, to 9/11. I remember riding the subway a couple of days after 9/11, and you know the subway is this great kind of you know experiment in democracy. You know, you've got somebody wearing a tux because they've got an affair. You've got somebody with a stroll or somebody eating you know, their lunch, you know, you, you've, you've got it all, you know, you've got a little bit of the microcosm of New York City unfolding on the subway as you're riding it. Um, but I remember those days after 9-11 and, and sitting in the subway and knowing that every single person in that subway was thinking about the exact same thing and how overwhelming that felt and how odd and how unnerving it felt to be in that experience um and, and I thought I'll never experience that again and here we are you know here we are again and there's something so um just there's something about that connection with other humans and I love that notion of that idea of art being an act of empathy and then that's so that's so right and Lawrence your your idea of we you know the, the need and the desire and the, the almost the the impulse you know um the uncontrollable impulse to express right 
um, you know, the marriage between hand and mind. And, and I just, um, you know, it's such a testament to all of you who have contributed your extraordinary works and to Patricia, to, to seeing it as an artist and as a curator and bringing it all together. Um, and it's so moving to be part of this. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'm just overwhelmed here, you know, I mean, gratitude and, um, and I want to thank you all for being here. And I hope that if you have questions, you'll ask them um, because, or share, because I feel like this is a time of reflection. Um, and, um, you know, this is a time to, to, to give some uh, emotion and sentiment to sort of what we're all collectively experiencing. So, um, you know, please feel free to ask a question. Patricia, I don't know if you want to say something, you want to um, uh, ask something, or if artists want to jump in here, but, but feel free. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm, you know, I think a lot about the 9-11, uh, you know, comparison and I think the difference is that after 9-11 the first thing we did was we gathered you know what I mean we yeah. went to our local bar we went to our friends homes we we ate meals together we like that's the first thing we did was we wanted to be like you know with people um and I mean the first thing I did was go downtown you know what I mean go and be as close as I could to to the people and everything that was happening there and so you know they're not the same kinds of events but I think in that way that you're saying there's a real you know, com you know, a real connection. The difference is again that we suddenly, suddenly, it's fraught to be mm -hmm. near people, and that is really, uh, you know, that is a whole new thing we have to negotiate. Um, and uh, you know, th it's interesting that the digital spaces are the spaces where we're trying to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I've probably everybody here has had like Zoom cocktail hour and Zoom family meetings and Zoom. You know, <laughs> sometimes you're just zoomed out, you know. But on the other hand, um, it really is a a, a way of negotiating the fact that we're, we're social animals. I mean, you know, we're social creatures and we need each other. And I feel like not only do we need each other, but you know, we need to care for one another. And I feel like that, that has been something that's been revealed to me anyway, not just to me, but the ways that we don't care for one another. Um, and, the, and also the potentialities of the ways that we can care for one another. And I feel like that, you know, this is, maybe adjacent topic, but, but I feel like artists, you know, think this way. I think that, you know, another way is possible. Maybe I'm naive, but um, we can't, it, nothing can happen if we can't imagine it first. And who imagines things that don't exist? Artists. <laughs> so, you know, I would say all artists imagine, if we can imagine a world that is, you know, a little different than some of the things that we experience now, um, you know, we can make it come to, to life. I mean, not a perfect, it'll never be a perfect world. That's okay. But um, we certainly can do more for one another and make sure that our, our society does more for one another. Well, I could go on and on, but <laughs> I want to see if anybody else has any questions or, or anything. I know we're, you know, I talked a little long. I couldn't, there was no way I couldn't talk about every single work though. I tried. I tried, but I feel like I didn't talk enough about each work, but you know, it's, I, I think that artists, you know, one of the things that's so amazing about Noma, here I'm still talking, but um, is that, um, you know, artists, we work in, in a kind of an isolation anyway. So I think for artists, this has been a very interesting time, right? To be kind of in an enforced isolation, but also your studio is a space of isolation, but it's a different, it's a different kind of isolation. And then we work, you, you're an artist because you have to be. I think somebody said, one of the Cecilias said that, right? Like you, or no, no, it was Elle. Elle said that, Laurence, right? Said that I had to make art, that I wasn't whole in, until I was making art. You're never not an artist. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm like going into my, I'm going into my, my like artist brain now. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a lot to say about this, but I feel a little under the pressure of the clock, so I get like less articulate as it goes. Um, and I want to see if anybody, if any other artist has something, you know, they want to contribute now. I wanted to also not forget to say that um, through NOMA, I'm going to be offering some professional development, professional practice workshops for artists in the community. Um, one, it's one of the things that I do is, is help empower artists to kind of you know, build a sustainable practice and, and have a life as an artist in, in whatever way that look, you know, that is right for you. Everybody, every artist's life is really, really different. Um, 
but you know, you don't stop being an artist ever. And um, I feel like all of your voices are necessary. And yeah, that's <laughs> anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'm reading wonderful, thank you for the wonderful comments on the chat. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm sorry that all of the artists didn't get a chance to speak. I see Dan here and I, I think Dan, I get your, got your email a little late. So <laughs> thank you for coming anyway. Um, and I do hope that, um, you know, we will meet up in the park later in the summer, masks or no masks, you know, distanced or not distanced that will create that opportunity. And I hope that I'll see all of you there. Does anybody want to? You're all muted, so you have to you have to type if you want to say anything. <laughs> uh, Nidia, do you have any last words? No, I just you know once again I I just think you know one of the interesting things was um, this notion of the hands you know the separate um, the hands the, the need to want to touch, um, but I think what's fascinating about art is um, that we touch you know. We just we just do even if we're not you know physically holding hands we touch I mean that's that's the human impulse you know um, and this goes back um, to you know our cave paintings right our, the, the impulse to create to record to observe the world around us that's that's what we do um, and so I thank you all for doing that and for doing that so beautifully and soulfully and for sharing with us. Um, and for giving expression to a moment um, that is unfathomable in so many ways that um, we're still trying to make sense of. Um, but you, you know, that, that constant, um, that pursuit of trying to, to give texture and, and life and, and shape um, to what feels um, so big and beyond us um, is what you all do. And, and, and for that, um, the world is a better place. So thank you all for doing that. Patricia, thank you for bringing that all together so beautifully um, and in such a way that I think really helps uh, illuminate um, this time uh, in such a meaningful way. Um, and and I, 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 again, I just, I feel full of gratitude. I, I wanna take a minute to, um, to, allow, uh, to ask Joanna to say a few words. Um, Joanna has uh, some um, comments to make about uh, some of our programs. So Joanna, if you would um, jump in here, um, we'd love to hear from you. Joanna sure, Castro. Thank you, Nidia. Um, so two quick shout outs um, before we start wrapping up tonight's program on to Martin Collins, Uptown Art Stroll Coordinator, um, as well as Natalie Espino, our community liaison for Borough President Gail Brewer. Um, as we wrap up, a couple of uh, uh, calls that we have, calls for submissions. One is the census awareness. If you have not completed your census, please do so. It's so important. It's only once every 10 years. We have a, a series of PSA videos as well as a coloring contest. The deadline for that is May 31st. Uh, you can go to artstroll.com and check that out. And um, another really uh, community community and healing in another way is we are gearing up for inward strong uh, campaign and asking all artists uh, that want to to submit uh, poster proposals for uh, promoting local businesses so these are the two calls we have the deadline is coming up it's next week may 26. so to that i pass the microphone to nidia again Oh, and a quick shout out also to Height Sites, another community partner, Height Sites and Uptown Collective are two great blogs that showcase Uptown arts. Thank you. Thank you. I think, um, Martin, have you raised a hand here? <laughs> Just want to give a shout out, inviting everybody back tomorrow evening. Uh, Thursday, May 21st at 7.30 for our next Day Home Open Studios tour with uh, artist Uniqua Simmons, sponsored by Inwood's own Evident Dentistry. That's 7.30 tomorrow evening on Facebook Live and on Zoom. So please join us for our next Day Home Open Studios tour, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. 
Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joanna. And to all of you, please come back. I think Michelle has also put a survey into, oh, there's actually a poll. Here we go. It's just popped up. I hope it's popped up on your screen and that hopefully you'll be able to take a few seconds to fill this out. Um, we, we're trying to incorporate this new technology uh, toward coming up with programming that, that really um, satisfies all of us. Well, um, I've, shared, I've shared links of all of our upcoming events yes. in the chat and rstrl.com has all of that information as well. If for some reason you're unable to see the poll or you're on your phone or you know what we don't know what your experience is, is right now so um, I'm also putting a link in the chat to a more exhaustive form It's still like you know maybe two minutes of your time and we really appreciate getting the feedback it helps us know how to make our programs in the future and to show engagement so thank you for taking that time yes and I'll just end with another um, note of gratitude to all of you tonight for being here, for sharing with us, um, for the artists who've contributed your works. Um, truly, it's been inspiring to listen to all of you, to see these works. Um, and Patricia, thank you so much um, for giving us this wonderful experience um, to take part in. Uh, truly, as I said at the beginning, um, this is life-giving frankly, and I think we all sort of know that, and um, we really um, appreciate that. So thank you so much to all of you um, tonight. We look forward to hearing more about your work, to hearing more about what you're thinking um, as these days and months unfold. Um, and I wish you all a great night. Um, and once again, we hope to see you at our next events. Um, thank you all very much, and good night.